Hello, and welcome to Arbitral Insights, a podcast series brought to you by our international arbitration practice lawyers here at Reed Smith. I'm Jose Estigarraga, Global Head of Reed Smith's International Arbitration Practice. As we close out 2021 and look towards 2022, we are pleased to present this mini-series of podcasts that will review key developments over the past year across a number of important geographic regions, industries, and specialisms. And we'll look ahead to consider what the next 12 months might bring. I hope you enjoy the industry commentary, insights, and anecdotes we share with you in the course of this series, wherever in the world you are. If you have any questions about any of the topics discussed, please do contact our speakers. And with that, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Arbitral Insights and the next edition of our 2022 Horizon Scanning mini-series this time focused on Francophone Africa. I am Anna Atala, a partner in our Paris office, and today I am delighted to be joined by Clément Fouchard, another partner here in our Paris office. So let's get started. Clément, what are in your view the main past developments in the field of international arbitration in Francophone Africa? Thank you, Anna. Well, I will start by maybe a noticeable trend is the continuous development of international arbitration with African countries adopting the New York Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards. This is obviously a welcome step, ensuring that arbitration with African countries will lead to enforceable awards in member states. So, for instance, last year, the Seychelles ratified the New York Convention on February 2020. And in doing so, they were followed by other African countries, such as Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, and Malawi, in March 2021. So, in total, and just to mention that for our auditors, there are now 168 state parties to the New York Convention. So, when mentioning Francophone Africa, one has to mention OHADA countries, which encompasses several Francophone African countries. Of the 17 member states of OHADA, five have not yet signed the New York Convention. And they are the Republic of Congo, Brazzaville, Chad, Togo, Guinea-Bissau, and Equatorial Guinea. But 2021 has also seen a noticeable trend towards facilitating business and dispute resolution for businesses conducted in Francophone Africa, which can only be welcomed. Two interesting initiatives can be briefly mentioned, and I will start with the ICC ECA Center of Entrepreneurship. In September 2021, the ICC and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, ECA, have launched the Center of Entrepreneurship Initiative, which is the first hubs were announced in Ghana, Kenya, Morocco, and Nigeria. And the purpose of this center is to foster innovation and improve the business environment for small and medium-sized enterprises in Africa by connecting local entrepreneurs to global markets and enhancing regulatory conditions from the small and medium enterprise to thrive. Another initiative also involving the ICC based in Paris, which is a cooperation agreement with uh, the CCPCCAF, sorry for the long acronym, in October 2021, the ICC and the Conférence Permanente des Chambres Consulaires Africaines et Francophones launched this cooperation agreement. The CCPCCAF was created in 1973 and included actors from Francophone Africa, such as national, commercial and industrial chambers, but also actors from France, Belgium, Luxembourg and Haiti. So the cooperation agreement covers international trade, access to finance, but also dispute resolution, including the arbitration tools promoted by the ICC. And the partnership between the ICC and the CCP CCAF will mobilize the ICC's vast network in 32 countries in order to assist smaller businesses with expanding internationally through digitalization and the adoption of ICC tools as best practices for international trade. Now, turning quickly to uh, the investment arbitration sphere, I would like to mention the official 
launch of the African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFTA, on the 1st January 2021. So the African Continental Free Trade Area is a free trade area founded in 2018 among 54 of the 55 African Union nations. So the free trade area is the largest in the world in terms of the number of participating countries since the formation of the WTO. The ratification of this agreement climaxes African Union effort to foster intra-African trade. And this agreement is expected to foster socio-economic development and industrial competitiveness in Africa. The AFCFTA will engender massive liberalization of intra-African trade in goods and services, making it easier for business to trade across borders and reduce the cost of trade. This agreement is not only a potential game changer for the continent inbound trade and investment, but also, and we, I think we'll come back to that, an illustration of the Africanization of investment law. It's worth to note that at the same time, between 2013 uh, until 2020, investor state dispute settlement cases brought against African state have unprecedentedly boomed to the extent that these cases outnumber cases brought against African state in the last 20 years, meaning that really in investment appropriation is in constant increase on the continent. So maybe I will stop now and ask you, what about you, Anna? Would you have anything else to add? Well, thank you, Clément. You're perfectly right. In the past, actually, we have seen a number of positive signs where OHADA works well, but also negative signs. I would say the quality of CCGA's decision was steadier until several years ago. There have been more puzzling decisions since then. It should be recalled that CCJ has been around for a long time, but did not come across as fully used initially. Also, we have seen busier arbitral centers in Africa with reliable arbitrators, modern structures, technology, and importantly, expertise in arbitration. Now, turning to the future, according to you, Anna, what are the trends that will likely be developing in international arbitration in Francophone Africa? Well, I would say first the transportation sector will continue to be on the rise and provide its fair share of disputes. But now the extractive sector, oil and gas, mining, is likely to continue to be one of the most important sources of disputes in Africa, and in particular in Francophone Africa. Four out of five of the latest Francophone Africa exit cases relate to this sector in particular in the Republic of uh, Congo for some of them very recently. In the future, we do not know how the CCGA will evolve, how OHADA will develop. It is not yet a system known to the general public, but it has good reason to develop. Uh, first in civil society, because of great proximity between magistrates and litigants in fairly small countries, and fairly small communities. And then for investors, the ICC or exceed arbitration systems or even UNCITRAL have no reason to expect a smaller number of cases going forward. Obviously, when an opponent is a public authority, expectations are not the same. Expectations are for an external, competent, independent, and totally honest justice. In this regard, the judicialization of arbitration, whether ICC arbitration or a smaller scale ICSID arbitration, is likely to lead to the development of conciliation processes. And we should see also in Francophone Africa increasing diversity for international arbitration. Still, the ICC is, of course, a key player in arbitration for Francophone Africa matters, and I think is likely to remain so, although we see an increasing trend of parties avoiding Paris as a seat of arbitration. Now there's uh, Paris to which they associate the ICC, and this is interior yeah, because of some recent rulings on corruption in matters involving Francophone Africa, which tend to favor a re-examination of the merits and sometimes the annulment of the award. 
Clément, in turn, looking forward, what are your predictions? In particular, do you think that 2022 will be the year of some sort of uh, Africanization of international arbitration as you evoked for the past? Thank you, Anna. And I share the views already expressed. And indeed, a common criticism made to arbitration proceedings involving African parties is that they are rarely administrated by an African arbitral institution. Another criticism made is that the arbitral tribunal rarely compresses an African arbitrator. Out of the 946 ICC arbitration proceedings registered in 2020, only one was seated in an Hoada country, Benin. Another revealing statistics out of the 1,520 arbitrators appointed in 2020, only two came from an Hada country, Cameroon, representing 0.13 of the appointed arbitrators. And obviously, those statistics do not compare to the number of cases involving parties or, or states to ICC proceedings. And we can find a similar trend in investment arbitration. Exit statistics reveal that sub-Saharan African states have historically been respondents in 15% of cases at the center, while Middle Eastern and North African states account for 11%. Despite this, sub-Saharan African arbitrators have been appointed in just 2% of exit cases, while Middle Eastern and North African arbitrators feature 4% of cases. In contrast, Western European states have faced 26% of claims, but arbitrators from this country have sat in an outsized 47% of exit cases. So sorry for burrowing a little bit with the statistics, but I think it's important to, to really set the scene. So despite the proliferation of arbitral centers in Africa, you just mentioned that, Anna, in Francophone Africa in particular, long-standing foreign centers such as the ICC and the LCIA are still more prevalent. And the ICC has, however, recognized that it is a necessity to develop ICC local centers in Africa. And just maybe to mention an initiative to try to help in this sector, ICC has sent the Hold the Door Open initiative. And the purpose of this program is to give young arbitration practitioners in Africa an opportunity to gain practical experience by observing arbitration hearings and engage with counsel and arbitrators in a structured program focused on advocacy skills and strategy. And this program will be launched uh, early 2022. The same trend is also spreading to arbitrators. If the rule is in the past has been to appoint Western arbitrators for arbitration proceedings seated in Africa, and involving African parties, voices were raised in 2021 to call for more diversity. Uh, I would like to mention a very interesting initiative, which is the African Arbitration Atlas, which lists African arbitration legislations, but also contains a directory for African arbitrators, including French-speaking arbitrators. Hopefully, this kind of initiative should help parties and practitioners to have a better understanding of local arbitration legislations which may prompt them to choose African seats for arbitrations. This tool also contains the, the directory I just mentioned, and it will no doubt help identify and appoint African arbitrators more often. There is a growing evidence that African institutions could gain in popularity in the coming years. Parties have made it clear that they are increasingly willing to favor the promotion of ethnic diversity within the tribunal by choosing African centers over the security of the tried and tested institutions in more developed nations. Maybe another word on the second trend I, we could see for 2022 onwards. Well, you, you already said it, Anna, we can see that more disputes are coming. And this is something that our clients are telling us. Recently, a general counsel of a French contractor was telling me that he has never seen so many disputes in the pipeline. This increase is particularly true in respect with the China-Africa relationships. To start with, Chinese foreign direct investments in Africa soared from US dollars 70 million in 2008 to 2.7 billion 
in 2019. And for example, the Belt and Road Initiative launched in 2013 has seen China investing heavily in Africa to connect Asia with Africa and Europe via land and maritime networks. If China has been investing heavily and has increased its presence in Africa, it seems that the honeymoon period is coming to an end. Africa actors seem to consider that Chinese investors do not always deliver on what was promised, which may lead to future disputes. For example, in September 2021, Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, announced that it would be reviewing its 2008 6 billion infrastructure for minerals contract with Chinese investors. The DRC sitting concerns they are not sufficiently benefiting Congo. Under the contract, the Chinese investor was to build more than 3,000 kilometers of roads, as many kilometers of railway, road infrastructure in Kinshasa, 31 hospitals were also planned, and no less than 2,000 social housing units in the capital and 3,000 in the province, as well as universities, were also to be built. However, according to the Congolese side, the projects carried out by the Chinese groups are far from meeting the commitments which were to be financed by profits from Congo, Sikomins, Cobalt and Copper joint venture. The DRC government has formed a commission to investigate these so-called major legal, technical and financial problems observed in the collaboration agreement between the two countries. So that's just an illustration of tensions which may produce future disputes. And this is not an isolated case in the DRC. Similar trends can be witnessed in Ghana or in Kenya. So for 2022 onwards, we do therefore anticipate a rise in disputes, and in particular between Chinese investors and African states, which may end up before arbitral tribunals. Thank you, Clément. I fully agree. In this regard, I would mention that we are here at Reed Smith, ideally poised to witness and analyze these latest trends. Having offices in France, where our teams are working on a daily basis on Francophone Africa-related matters, and also in our Asia-Pacific offices, particularly in China. So we thank you for listening to this program and remain available for any questions you may have. Arbitral Insights is a Reed Smith production. Our producer is Ali McArdle. For more information about Reed Smith's global international arbitration practice, email Joseas de Garaga at jia at reedsmith.com. You can find our podcasts on Spotify, Apple, Google Play, Stitcher, reedsmith.com, and our social media accounts at Reed Smith LLP on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. This podcast is provided for educational purposes. It does not constitute legal advice and is not intended to establish an attorney-client relationship, nor is it intended to suggest or establish standards of care applicable to particular lawyers in any given situation. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Any views, opinions, or comments made by any external guest speaker are not to be attributed to Reed Smith LLP or its individual lawyers. All rights reserved.